HP, thinkers are great, but doers change the world. The buzz around biomimicry has the business world looking for inspiration in some unexpected places, like the San Diego Zoo. The zoo consults with a growing number of private companies on design and technologies modeled on the natural world. Biomimicry offers a new way to look at the San Diego Zoo that's totally different from what people were used to when they came in. They used to come in and look at the animals and be happy because they saw a polar bear or a brown bear. What we try to do now is try to allow them to come to a deeper awareness of what the animal is all about. <laughs> It's one of the largest zoos in the world, with over 4,000 animals and almost 100 years of history. A few years ago, zoo CFO Paula Brock read the book Natural Capitalism. That book really opened my eyes to the recognition that environmental sustainability and economic sustainability are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they can be synergistic. And if companies were looking for sustainable ideas, she realized that the zoo could be a key resource, with thousands of examples in nature to inspire innovation. We brought in business leaders, uh, CEOs of many companies, and had them understand uh, more the depths of biomimicry. So they define a problem for us, and they say, do you have any plants or animals that can solve this problem? And we go through to our keepers and our scientists and say, do we? And um, we will come up with many, many uh, different alternatives uh, to solving this particular design problem. But what they all have walked away with is said, wow, by looking at the different opportunities in nature, it opened their minds to different kinds of solutions. Brock sees the zoo as a new kind of R&D lab, starring animals like this gecko. It has many adaptations uh, that really relate to the field of biomimicry. From his uncanny ability to stick onto objects and climb, or his ability to slightly change his color, this animal has the ability to regenerate his tail. And in Brock's vision of the zoo, animal keepers like Todd Schmidt are the expert consultants. The way that you and I, most of us in the United States, have been trained has been in very much of a silo-based way of thinking. There's biology, there's chemistry, there's engineering, there's architecture, but they don't usually talk to each other. With biomimicry, we have to initiate this cross-disciplinary way of thinking. Brock sees the zoo as a place for those different disciplines to come together around nature. Crossing disciplines is a part of the thinking at another institution that is leading the biomimicry charge, Arizona State University in Phoenix, where the next generation of innovators are also looking to nature for inspiration. Professor Prasad Bharadkar leads innovation space. We bring together students from industrial design, graphic design, business and engineering to work in teams. And the goal of the program is to teach students how to do new product development with an emphasis on sustainable development, on solving societal problems, and also making sure that the products the students design have some kind of a market value. Bradkar encourages his students to study examples from nature as an integral part of their process. Some of the students are looking at how does nature do packaging. For instance, you can look at seed pods. You know, seed pods are a form of packaging seeds and can that inspire new ways of doing design. Every student group gets paired with a sponsor, often a large corporation. We find a problem that these companies might be facing. We make sure that it has a strong societal component. And then we put together the teams, and the teams over the period of one year solve that problem. Let's get started. One team that's working with Dow Corning, for instance, is designing a therapeutic system that provides hot and cold water that you can use to, to cool down or heat up, say, joints or inflamed areas of the body. There's a lower strap that goes around your waist, one that goes to your chest, and then you have the standard straps. What uh, considerations have you taken into the frame of the, the user? For male and female, the backpack shouldn't be too big of an issue. Innovation Space was started in 2005 by Bradcar's colleague, Paul Rothstein. That same year, he died unexpectedly of a heart attack. We had sort of thought of the program together. We had conceptualized and planned it together. 
Brad Carr is continuing his friend's work, and Innovation Space has carried on Rothstein's legacy, using the principles of biomimicry to develop a product for victims of cardiac arrest. We've got a couple of situations where student teams that are very entrepreneurial, they form companies after graduation and start seeing if they can take some of these ideas forward. And the company Innovate Life is an example of that. Joshua Tong runs Innovate Life. A recent graduate of ASU, his team developed an idea for a blanket cooling system for heart attack victims. Their product, which they call Kelvin, would induce therapeutic hypothermia, cooling a patient's body after cardiac arrest. By dropping the patient's body temperature, you can save the brain. This is essentially what our product does. It's currently being used in hospitals, a lot of the big cities across the U.S., but now the big transition is using this in the pre-hospital setting. And as they've developed Kelvin, they've looked to nature for design ideas. There are kangaroos in, in Australia, and they cool themselves by licking their wrists. And that really helped us understand that there's strategic heat transfer points in the body. For the kangaroos, that's at the wrist, but for humans, that's between the legs and under the arms. We also looked at, you know, having a body wrap, that's something that, that folds out. You know, how do we make that compact for a field environment? Um, and so one of the things that we incorporated into Kelvin was, you know, leaf folding patterns. I really think biomimicry is probably one of the most profound design methodologies out there um, because nature is designed. It's perhaps the best teacher that we have for design and innovation. Brad Carr believes biomimicry is an idea whose time has come. Yeah. Innovation is a process happening every day, and nature now plays a big role. We are getting more and more aware of the fact that our planet is in danger, and because biomimicry holds this potential for helping us come up with more sustainable solutions, I think there's an increased energy, there's a groundswell of people exploring this really carefully. While nature has inspired many successful innovations, the world of biomimicry is still relatively new. But as we've seen, it's growing fast. Like Dow Corning, Interface, and Calera, corporations large and small are asking how nature can help solve their problems. And given the diversity of the natural world, they're bound to find answers that will spur new innovations for years to come.